Okay, now that I've got my two by fours, or a good supply of them, I think I've got everything that I need to get the framing done. I'm ripping most of them down to make the amount of material I use smaller and also keep the weight down on the material coming into the bus. So that being said, I'm just gonna start by ripping down some two by fours. Got enough two by fours ripped down to where I can finish uh, framing in the walls or where the wall panels will be screwed to. It's a real good idea also if you're doing this, any wood being screwed directly into the metal always has some kind of um, temperature break behind it so that you're not, your screw heads aren't ending up exposed to the air that's going to be inside the bus. I've got plywood screwed in as the first part of the frame of the windows and then I'm going to put another piece of wood over that that's screwed into this wood that way those screws that get cold will not condensate into the bus when it's warmer inside and colder outside and vice versa it's just a good idea to have a temperature break between everything that you're screwing into the metal ah. okay I got all of the window framing done both sides done check I'm gonna start doing the insulation now on the roof that way when the colder days come I can uh, I cannot feel so cold in here my hands won't you know you know that feeling when you bang your hands when it's cold god that sucks now that the window framing is done I can move on to um, insulating the roof that'll give me some space because see I've got See, I've got all the window framing done, but I've also got this insulation in here now, and uh, it's occupying a lot of space. So, if I can get rid of some of the insulation by installing it, I'll invariably end up with some extra room. So, I've got a lot of work to do. I'm going to move on to uh, cutting and installing some of this insul insulation now. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, or can tell what I did. But I basically took the measurement from one rib to the other, and then I scored one piece of insulation. One, I made a score at five inches, five inches, five inches, then at six inches, six inches, and then cut it off at another five inches. And that puts this span right up into the cavity that I needed to go in. I scored it and then cracked it on the back so that it basically just folded in the spots where I needed the curve to be, and it seemed to work. Though this first attempt was a little bit sloppy, it was my first attempt. I've never done this before, but now that I have a method, I suspect that each cavity that I do from here on out will go smoother. Now, I can always, where the reflective paper ripped, I can always take some reflective tape and fill it in, or if there's any rips in the reflective paper, 
I can just go over it with the reflective tape, thus sealing it and creating uh, a airtight insulation. All in all, I'm actually fairly happy with this. For the remaining piece of insulation, it's a uh, 14 inch piece. I'm gonna go seven inches and uh, cut it right down the middle, score it right down the middle and then just crack it so that it fits into the cavity with a little bit of a concave. We'll see how that works. Actually gets it up in there nice and choit, choit like a tiger. So once my furring strips go in, uh, I shouldn't have much problem at all. Okay, I've got my speed square. Um, it's a drywall square that I'm using for this. Uh, I'm just going to measure out the 26 and a half inches, make a mark here, make a mark here, one at the top, one at the bottom, that way I know that my straight edge is going from 26 and a half to 26 and a half down here. Now I do have a factory edge up here, you always want to try and use the edge on the factory cut. Um, it always is a little bit straighter than something you might do yourself, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece down to the, to the length that I need. my piece that's going to go inside the cavity between the ribs. I'm just going to make some cuts, score about halfway through so that I can crack it and create that concave um, so that it'll fit into the curvature of the roof without issue while leaving the paper intact on the other side, the side that's going to be facing out towards us inside um, and that way it'll give us a, that thermal break. It'll, it'll stay airtight without, uh, without too much worry, so. Okay, I made a mark for my extended piece after the brace that's in the ceiling. I'm gonna cut that piece off completely. That'll leave me with the piece that I need to concave, and then I'll make my scores. Okay, that's the piece for the center. Now I'll measure out my lengths that I want for the concave part of the ceiling. Okay, see I've got an accordion type piece of insulation. I'm just gonna try to install this and see if I can do it without, uh, without tearing this side.
looks like it's going in pretty good, but this brace right here is a little bit bent. It's giving me a little bit of issue. I'm just gonna have to cut some of my insulation and uh, Yeah, this bend right here. I don't know if you can see that. There's like a somebody bent this one when they were installing it or something. Other than that, it's going in pretty tight. So maybe if I just cut a divot out, I can get this one in there and I'll have uh, developed a method that I think is going to work for the rest of the bus. It's a little time consuming and tedious, but. Um, I think it's a lot better than just doing strip after strip after strip uh, Mainly because you do have to go back in with uh, reflective tape to seal in all the gaps um, But I think this method is gonna work and tight. It was a good cut provided that I don't end up with another one of these dented uh, braces. Yeah it's nice and flush with the uh, existing reflective barrier and rib edge. So good to go. All right, well, that's how I'm going to do the rest of these, so check it out. Okay, got my middle piece. Um, I kind of screwed up. I'm trying to do all of the silver. I don't think it matters much, but just to keep it uniform, I'm trying to do all of the silver non-writing side on the inside. I messed that up a little bit here. Um, I think it'll be okay. Just trying to have a clean look. I don't know, even though it's going to be covered up I'm kind of anal like that but this is the centerpiece that's going to go in here I know that there's probably going to be a small gap still in here and that won't be too big of an issue to either come back with foam in uh, spray foam insulation or cut a piece that kind of tucks right up in there and then tape that off with reflective tape but uh, but uh, this is my uh, this is my centerpiece here it's gonna tuck right up in here Okay, that's it. Nice and tied up against the uh, reflective insulation that's in there now. And I shouldn't have any issues at all. And again, I have this, this gap right here. It's probably about three inches, probably about three inches big. It won't be too big of a deal to cut three inch strips and come right back down the center with uh, with a piece of insulation and get it tucked in there and then tape off tape off the edges with uh, reflective tape and uh, 
make sure it's nice and clean and airtight. Now, I, I, I'm suspecting that I'll have an airtight seal since I've got this reflective barrier. It's a radiant and moisture barrier here. It's just giving me that one bit of extra protection between the uh, roof and this insulation. Um, so that'll basically stop any condensation from happening. It'll also have a little bit of an R value, though it's right up against the metal. It's not going to be too much of an R value, but it is a double reflective insulation. And that little teeny bit of an air barrier where the bubbles are will actually cause a thermal effect. So with the radiant thermal barrier and moisture barrier here, um, I will have the insulation protective from the roof in any condensation that happens. So one three inch strip will finish this off and uh, I'll have an insulated roof getting all this done. It's probably gonna take, take a good bit of time, but um, I'm not in a rush to get this done and I really wanna make sure that uh, this part is done really well so that uh, we don't have issues down the line. Um, I think this is going to do it. I feel comfortable uh, with this method, um, the scoring and placing, making sure that it's really tucked in against the vapor barrier so there's no, no loose edges, nice clean cuts, and uh, I think this is going to work. All right, Vagabonds. It's a couple days since I brought in the last bit of materials, the insulation and 2x4s for framing. Um, I have completed, well, just about completed the roof uh, insulation. I've got some little bits, you probably see above me. I've got some little bits to take care of to uh, fill in and get it completed, completed. But all the big stuff is done and um, I'm feeling really good about the process that happened here. Okay, that about does it for the ceiling insulation. There's a couple more spots that I have to do that are pretty intricate, like right in here. I've got to figure out a way to get the insulation in this section here. And uh, also the other hatch has to be insulated around it. But other than that, the ceiling insulation is done. I'm exceptionally happy with how this turned out. The method that I used, the accordion cuts that I made, and layering it in with one piece and retaining the integrity of the um, reflective paper um, worked out really well as opposed to cutting strip, putting a strip in, cutting another strip, putting that strip in, and then taping all of the seams. That wouldn't have made me happy at all. It would have been a lot more expensive on material. And uh, this really did the trick. It was a little bit tricky, I have to say. But once I got the method down, um, it went in really smooth, really simply. It was a little bit tedious. It took a little while. But again, the difference between having an insulated bus and not insulated well is is probably pretty dramatic I, I can imagine also I wanted to make sure that all this insulation went in tight so there weren't gaps everywhere not only that I wouldn't have to go back in and fill in with spray uh, foam um, but uh, decrease on any sort of condensation exchange that may happen through temperature variances so I'm really happy um, I'm going to move on to the next step, which is basically stirring the frame and um, just stick around.
this insulation will be pretty good and I'll come back and fill in all the gaps with some spray foam and tighten it all up with some reflective tape and I think I'll be good to go here so I got the other one too <laughs> Look at what we've been doing. Did you have a stage fright, fright face? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now I'm taping up the seams for all those ceiling insulation. The insulation is proven to be quite significantly more detailed than I expected. Um, there's a lot of parts to this to get it right, and uh, I really do want to get it right. This is probably one of the most important parts of the build, so um, if you want to see Jen take them around and show them the ceiling insulation and see the, uh, the work that we put in, um, you'll see other clips in this video as well from me putting it in, but then... Um, yeah, just do a quick walk, walk through and uh, watch out for my glasses. Vapor barrier first and then three inches of insulation 
just two stacks of one and a half inch insulation back to back. Um, and that went in to where we fit one and a half insulation all the way into the empty cavity that goes down here. And then another piece of uh, one and a half insulation to fill in all of these um, slots, these cavities here where just to give it added insulation and uh, make it better. Right? Yep. What do you want to say? framing is done, the wall framing is done. We need to get the wall panels and electrical next to move on to uh, putting all the electrical um, outlets into their places and then along with that we'll be getting all the lights and fans and everything as well. So that's basically our, our next part of the project is wall paneling in uh, all of the electrical components. So. I'm exhausted. We've been fortunate enough to have these really, really, really nice days, but I'm trying to kill myself to make up for all of February that it seemed to snow like every four days it snowed, so. Yeah, this is what we got going. The bus is a mess right now. It's a work zone again. But, it's okay. We're, we're, we, we do a cleanup after every day of work. So that when we come into the bus the next day, it's 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 not like you know frazzling, and you can just get to work without having to deal with nonsense. So, but yeah, the insulation is definitely a lot more tedious than I thought it was going to be, especially because I didn't know how involving it was going to be to get it right. So. coming along so stick with us I made the success I have a while I make it with my tools I have great success one wall